Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge T430 Workstation Server Memory Upgrade Kits and how to properly load and configure your system. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge T430 Workstation. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's start with the uh, chassis itself. It's a 5U chassis. It can be put in a rack or used as a uh, tower workstation uh, desktop at your house. Uh, personally, I think this is great if you uh, need a server at an office, but they don't really have a rack or they don't have somewhere to put a rack. Uh, this is a great solution where you can kind of throw it into the corner. It can act as an office server. Uh, if you're just looking for a home lab server at home, this is a great option. Uh, if you're looking for a gaming workstation or gaming server, also a great option here, okay? Um, as far as uh, the different types of chassis, uh, you can get a uh, 16 bay small form factor is what we have here, or you can get a four bay uh, cabled in large form factor, or you can get an eight bay large form factor, which will have hot swap drives. Okay, so those are different types of chassis you can get. As far as the CPUs are concerned, there are two CPUs inside. It is an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means it uses Intel Xeon E5 2600 V3 or V4 series processors. People ask us, hey, what type of processors processors do you like? Uh, personally, I, I, you know, it depends on what you're doing, but I like a lot of the V3s just because the price point right now is so great. Um, on like a, a lower end, you can get some like E5 2620 V3s for a really, really good price point right now. Or you can get something uh, for a little bit more expensive like E5 2660 V3, 52670 V3. If you need to go all the way up on the high end, I mean, you can use some great stuff in this like E5 2690 V3, E5 2697, E5 2699. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can use in there. Same thing on the V4s that you can go up and get some pretty awesome processors. Um, now, it just kind of, again, depends on what you're trying to do. A lot of what we're doing is, you know, trying to just get good bang for the buck, which is right in that uh, that value range, like the E5 2660, uh, E5 2670 V3s are good value procs. So uh, that's something that I personally like to recommend when we're building these out ourselves. So uh, as far as the memory is concerned, there are 12 DIMM slots inside. It uses DDR4 memory. There's a number of different speeds you can use. You can go as low as 2133, 2400, or 2666. I will note though, when you put in 2666, it's actually going to clock down to 2400 speed, which is actually the true fastest and the true uh, max speed that you can get with this machine. Uh, as far as the different sizes are concerned, you can put in as low as a 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, or all the way up to a 32 gig. No, unfortunately, you can't use 64 gigs with, with this machine. I wish you could, uh, but uh, only thing that you can, or the highest you can go is up to 32 gigs, okay? Now that brings us to what types of RAM can you use? There are two types of RAM. You can use ECC registered, which is known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduce, which is known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 384 gigabytes using 1232 gigs at 2400 megahertz. Same thing with load reduce. You can max out at 384, 12 by 32 using 2400 megahertz. So now that we know a little bit more about the, uh, the machine, let's uh, pop it open. I want to show you how to actually install the DIMMs, uh, where, where the uh, channels are at. So if you're not maxing it out, what would be the proper way to configure it. Uh, but before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Uh, you always want to be safe before you open it up. So I'm going to grab that and be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. If you're at home and you don't have ESD gear, don't worry. One of the things I'd say is, you know, just uh, maybe make sure you're not doing, uh, you're opening this up on a, a desk and you uh, touch maybe a piece of metal, something like copper beforehand, just kind of help uh, dissipate some of the um, electrostatic discharge on your hand. Uh, but I get a lot of people don't have the ESD at home. Uh, don't fully worry about it. It'll be okay. Just uh, try to be as safe as you can. So make sure it's set to unlock. You're going to want to open her up. All right, now that we are in, you will notice there is an air baffle on top. Uh, personally, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of the way that this one is designed by Dell. The air baffle, you'll notice when we get back here, is just really kind of resting on a bunch of cables. It's kind of honestly a pain to put it uh, put it back in, and you will notice this when uh, when we get towards the end. But uh, this is the air baffle here. Um, I do like some things about it right here. You'll notice there's a, uh, a sensor right here. This is an intrusion detection sensor. So if you're, uh, you know, remoting into this server, uh, you can actually track if someone has opened it up or has gotten inside of it, uh, which is a nice feature. Um, also, it says on the air baffle, this is CPU 1, this is CPU 2 over here, and it has the DIMM slots labeled from A1, A2, A3, and A4. and uh, same over here on the uh, the Bs. It has them labeled down here, which is probably hard to see on the camera, uh, but that is a nice feature. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift the air baffle up. So you just want to lift straight up, okay? And I always stress lift straight up because the heat sinks are tall. 
there are uh, on the back plane here there are a bunch of resistors and capacitors and transistors and stuff that you just don't want to nick and accidentally damage because then you could all of a sudden uh, mess up your back plane right and you just don't want to have any kind of user errors but you'll notice when i talk about some of these cables right here they're really it's a tight squeeze the air baffles right on it it's not my favorite design by dell to be honest with you um, but the machine itself is an awesome machine uh, that would be one of the, the little flaws that i would just personally have a gripe with but not a big deal so you'll notice a couple things that are a little bit strange also about this machine as we discussed there are 12 dim slots this is cpu one and cpu one controls eight dim slots whereas cpu two only controls four dim slots and both of them have four memory channels per CPU, which means there are two DIMMs per memory channel with CPU one, and there's one DIMM per memory channel with CPU two, okay? So it's a little bit of a, a strange, uh, as, you know, as far as the overall architecture and design on it, um, but it's actually the exact same as the, uh, the R430, so if you're familiar with the R430, uh, you'll be really familiar with this here. So, okay, uh, once we get in, one of the things I also wanted to talk about, not every person wants to uh, max out their system or needs a maxed out system, you might be just using this and need 64 gigs of RAM, or you might need, you know, 128 gigs of RAM or something like this, which is very, very normal and what a lot of people are doing with this machine. Um, when you're doing that, you want to know what's the best way to install, what's the best way to configure it uh, so that you're maxing out your performance uh, because you're not using every DIMM slot. Well, what I always tell people is make sure you are utilizing your memory channels, okay? So let's just say you only have one CPU. I would recommend putting in four or eight DIMM slots. If you're putting in four, you're going to want to put them at the start of the channel, which is the white DIMM slot. So you see these tabs that are white? This is A1. This is A2. Coming back out here is A3, A4. So the four tabs that I just put pushed down, though that would actually be how you'd want to install it if you're putting in four modules with one CPU. Now let's say you have two CPUs and you want to put in eight modules. I would not recommend putting all eight modules over here on CPU one. You actually want to put the next four down here. And people say, well, why would I do that? Well, again, it's all about maximizing your performance. You want to have as many uh, of your memory channels running for you at one time and have an even distribution across your memory channels so that way you're getting a, a maximum performance overall, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and install them. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks and tips that I recommend. So first things first, before I start loading modules, I personally like to make sure all of my memory tabs are open. So I'll go in and I'll take just a quick second pop them all open it will take less than 30 seconds and again to me it's just about safety um, i'm my goal is to protect the machine and to protect the modules and not do anything silly because i'm rushing and accidentally damage a dim or accidentally damage the machine okay um, the next thing i always like to recommend when you look at the module itself you will notice that there is a notch in the middle. This is known as a key. This key is very important because it's not perfectly in the center. So you can't just go in and shove your module in and think you have it perfect. You need to line it up properly. Because if you don't, one of two things will end up happening. You could damage the, the lead itself and damage the module, or you could damage the dim slot, which would render the dim slot useless or potentially mean you have to replace the motherboard, neither of which are a situation you want to run into. So just simply make sure you line it up properly. So in this case, it's actually going to be like this, okay? So I'm going to start with A1 because that is the first channel and the first slot in the first channel, okay? So you will also notice, this is another thing I always like to point out, I've set the module down, I'm not holding it, it's in the dim slot but it's actually not in the DIMM slot. It's not fully inserted. So if I went to power on the machine, it would not register this module. It just wouldn't even recognize it. So you need to hear these two clicks. Okay, those two clicks let you know you fully inserted the module, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and pretend as if I wasn't maxing it out even though we we're about to max this thing out. And I'm gonna go to A2 because again, a lot of people who are doing their upgrades aren't fully maxing it out. So I wanna help them as well and show them the proper way. Oh, and you know what I just did? I accidentally put it in the wrong way because I didn't line it up properly. So again, uh, you know, I don't care if you've been a technician for 20 years, your first day on the job, it's a simple user error that we all do, and I'm just sitting here talking away, and I put it in the wrong way. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here, and this is actually gonna flip around, and we're gonna put this into A3. And then we're gonna do A4. And again, this is really isn't hard. Uh, people will ask, you know, hey, I'm not really a, a technician, and I wanna, 
you know, upgrade uh, my, you know, desktop at home? Is this something that I can do? Yes, you can do this. This is a very, very easy upgrade. Uh, videos like this will help walk you through it and uh, show you just some of the, you know, simple things that you need to do to just make sure you do it properly. But really, this is uh, one of the easiest upgrades uh, that you can do with the machine. And in my opinion, one of the ones that will give the best boost in performance. And generally speaking, CPUs are so much further ahead of everything else. If you want to increase the performance on your machine, what I always recommend is really two things. Get, uh, upgrade your RAM, and that's going to boost your performance. And if you're running on hard drives, you might want to consider switching to solid state drives. That'll be the, the quickest way to, to make your, your machine faster and boost the overall performance. Uh, and what I always recommend is really the, the memory is the number one thing that'll, that'll get you there. So, okay, so a couple other things. Uh, when you install the module, sometimes uh, one of the most common user errors that we run into is how we talk about someone doesn't fully insert the module. So I wanted you to, to look at these tabs. You see how this tab is uh, is in and this tab is in and this one's jetting out over here. That'll let you know if you install the module, let's say this tab right here is kind of looking like that. That module is not inserted. It might look like it is, but it's just not fully inserted. And you just need to hear that click right there and make sure it, it, it goes down all the way. Okay, now I'm gonna fast forward. And I'm gonna finish installing the rest of them and we'll be right back. All right, now we've installed 384 gigabytes in our T430 workstation. We've completely uh, maxed it out with 1232 gigs. Uh, it's going to be a pretty sweet beat boost in performance overall. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and put this back together. Before we do, um, I wanted to let you know that if uh, you're in the market right now to upgrade uh, your T430 and you need any modules, do us a favor and uh, contact our team, sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We have a ton of variety of modules in stock. Uh, everything from you know 4 gigs, 8 gigs, 16 gigs, 32 gigs, uh, really everything under the stun as far as speeds. And we'd love the opportunity to quote you, so please give us that chance at sales at cloudengine.com. All right, we're going to go ahead and put it back together right now. Um, so first things first, you're just going to have to line up your, uh, your air baffle. And I will note, we kind of talked, uh, you're going to have these fighting you back here, so you're going to need to be careful. Uh, it's kind of a pain. Again, the one thing I don't like about this model so we're going to come down. I'm going to physically kind of put these in. I'm going to start back here and make sure it's all good to go. Push it back down here. All right. Now we're all set. Again, I mean, it's not like it's hard to do. It's just not my favorite design because you need to be a little bit more careful than some of the other machines out there. Throw the top back on and call it a day. Well, hey, appreciate you stopping by. If you made it this far, do us a favor. Click that like, smash that subscribe. Take care.